The growing world water shortage is a matter of increasing concern. Nations come to blows over this precious liquid and its scarcity risks further instability. In Central America, the lack of water means it's become not just a basic right, but a luxury. Travelling through four countries, a so-called water convoy, organised by NGOs, aims to reach a better understanding of the difficulties facing the Latin American continent. In Nicaragua, a country ravaged by past wars and political turmoil, the need for safe drinkable water has resulted in a move towards privatisation. The Italian Committee for Water is an NGO which operates in Italy but which is also part of an international network. We work with citizen associations, local communities and a range of organisations linked to civil society throughout the world. We don't accept the privatisation process. Water must be a public resource which belongs to all mankind. It cannot simply be sold as a product and managed according to market rules. Hit by past wars during the 1980s, Nicaragua is enjoying a relatively calm period. While economic weakness still remains a problem, lack of experience in confronting globalization and corruption is also hampering change. In addition, some argue signing agreements with Brussels could be risky. A treaty between the EU and Central America aims to introduce market liberalisation to increase competition. But many feel water belongs to the community and should remain in public hands. At the moment, our governments are discussing a treaty of free association with the European Union. This is like the past treaty we signed with the USA. The EU has also put in a clause which says European companies investing in the region must have the same rights as American firms. Central America is supposed to be open to privatisation. EU businesses will be able to exploit the biodiversity of the region and its water. They'll be able to dictate the market. We're not industrialised, so foreign firms will decide what and how the market is run. We won't have the same rights, and if a foreign company goes bankrupt, it just leaves, regardless of what impact that will have on us. Central America remains a huge and relatively underdeveloped market. Some fear rapid growth and exploitation of the continent's resources could have disastrous ecological consequences for the planet. These commercial agreements can only produce benefits if adequate infrastructure is put in place. They've planned more than 300 dams. Airports, pipelines and commercial corridors between the two oceans are also needed. These countries are part of the so-called Mesoamerican Biological Corridor, an area rich in biodiversity. It has many animal and vegetable species, only the Amazon has more. This region has many resources and many people are eager to get their hands on them. With European observers on board, the fact-finding mission aims to find out more about the situation. Foreign investors want Latin American governments to open up the market to increase competition. A lack of money on the ground is resulting in many companies picking up long-term private contracts with big money at stake. Many communities, which have always controlled the water supply, have been pushed out, causing deep resentment. Unlike Europe, critics say there is no system of holding private firms to account. Well, I must admit, I didn't know that. It was important for me to come here to see and understand the situation. 
Back in Europe, local council control is, so to speak, a positive thing. We do ask for that. But the public water boards, which in recent years have been privatised, become the property of local councils again, or at least come under their partial control. In Central America, it's different. Local council control can often be the first step towards privatisation. With privatisation and the construction of hundreds of dams on the agenda, the convoy not only aims to investigate the potential risks to the region's ecosystem, but also the effects on society. In Ecuador, NGOs have successfully guaranteed that water is a fundamental right, enshrined in the constitution. Water is public property. It's a public resource which must be used in the interests of the people. We also have a responsibility to future generations. If we say that water is public property, it means the Ecuadorian constitution clearly prohibits any form of privatization. Central America's political and economic situation rarely reaches the top of the global political agenda, with world attention focused elsewhere. Basic human rights, which are frequently taken for granted in Europe, are jeopardized. The water convoy aims to show privatization doesn't always mean a good deal for everyone. Privatizing water will not result in water for all. We can see in Europe, in Paris for example, where the city is trying to take water back into public hands again. Tomorrow's blue gold the lack of safe drinkable water has led some to claim it will become more important than oil. Like other parts of the world, Central America's water supply remains at risk.